All right, what are we doing today? Um, we're going to pull the motor out today with uh, this tool. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing throttle actuators, so uh, you know, I flew up here to uh, take care of this car all the way up in NorCal. Um, it was a one hour flight and uh, TSA was asking me what the heck that is. <laughs> yeah, you said that, that they were just inspecting it, huh? Yeah, one so by they one. they asked me what that is and what this is and I told them it's a tool and that's a car part and they inspected it and went through it and uh, I mean, it was sealed and then she kind of opened it up and she's like, oh, it's sealed, okay. And then she kind of looked at it and she's like, oh, okay. All right, you're good to go. So here we are. <laughs> Today we're going to pull out the throttle actuator, uh, which is pretty simple. So you guys get to see the process of it. So first step is to remove the intake and the intake manifold. The easiest step that you guys don't realize, I think a lot of people actually disassemble this whole air box up top. So they pull it out of here or reinstall. But the best way to do it is to remove these two bolts here. One here and one here. These are T20s. We'll remove those two. This comes out, which I'll show you guys real quick. So that's out, and then that's out, this is here, this comes off of here, like that, grab this piece, and you can slide this out of here, and then this comes right out. So installation of the air box will be much easier after. And then the next step is to get a six millimeter socket. We are going to remove this clamp, and then this clamp as well. Like that. And then we are going to undo this hose by simply squeezing on the two ribs, one up top, one on the bottom. Pop this out, like that. And then you got two 10 millimeter bolts. This is all the tools you need, by the way. <laughs> so, two 10 millimeter bolts, one here, one here. Place that aside. And then we're going to pop this off like this, grab this, lift and pull, and then push this out of here like that. Once we get it out of here, we'll be able to get this air box up and out. So place this down here. Luckily we have carpet so it doesn't damage it. <laughs> grab this, wiggle this, and get that off. Now that's off. Okay, so now underneath here, you guys won't be able to see this, but there is a clamp for each individual um, ITB. So there's going to be four over here, four over here, and it's six millimeter. Luckily, I have a swivel adapter, makes life easier. Locking extension so it does not drop. Extend it out further because I couldn't bring it along with me, with me through the airplane, you know, so I have to improvise. <laughs> Move this out of the way, and then we're going to start removing the clamps. You can actually see it right here on this side. So, right here. Back that out, and then continue on to the next ones. You can use the flat head as well, but this is a lot easier. It's a little bit more difficult because you have the flex wheel kit, but... Yeah. There's going to be a hose that's connected back here. Okay, got that one. I already started on this side. So, same thing on this side. Yeah, four clips or clamps in total. And, uh, you know, if you have a better flashlight, it makes life easier. But... <laughs> We're gonna work with what we got here. Yep. Let me just clarify, I do not do house calls, okay? Um, he is a special friend. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so after we get the eight clamps out underneath the manifold, we're going to be able to lift it. Um, so there's a intake air temperature sensor here. Unplug that by squeezing that, pulling it. And there's a hose under here. So we gotta lift this up first, like that. And then we're going to grab this hose here squeeze it and then get it off like that. See that? That's the hose that connects to here. Then once we get that off, we'll be able to lift this side up like that. Go to the back and there's one more hose back here. You guys won't be able to see this, but it's the same hose like this. You just gotta squeeze it together like that and it'll release it. So it's all the way back there. So this one's a little bit harder to get to, easier to do it afterward. Oh man, oh man. Flex you okay? Yeah, I hate you. <laughs> I 
side, you can grab this manifold and then lift it and pull it. Okay. Now under here, we just gotta undo basically all the connectors that holds this down. So anything that's connected to it. So remove this out of here. This is the uh, coolant temperature sensor. This is the vandal sensor, the solenoid connector. Undo this one. That, and then you have this connector down here, which is the oil pressure sensor. Lift this one up, like that. That way we have room to be able to move this upwards after. So that's good, that's good, that's off. And then you got this one, which is the O2 sensor. Unclip that, separate it, like that. And then right here are the throttle actuators. So right here and here. So we're going to undo the four tens, nuts. One here, one here, one there, and one back there. And so just for people's knowledge, the throttle actuators is what moves these. Yeah. So once, and it we get this, once I get this off, uh -huh. um, we'll have a better visibility. But it, it basically just controls this to open up the valve here. So like that. And then over here as well. Without this functioning, this does not open. So that allows us to be able to lift this up and be able to get under here. So you gotta unclip the connector for the power actuators. Oh yeah, this is a field breather valve by the way. So it's a good idea to do it if you're already here, um, but you know, yours is so low mileage. Yeah. Really that. There we go. So pop that off like that. And then now we have more room. So. I undo this, squeeze these, and then you'll be able to pull this out. Like that. And then we gotta unclip this with a makeshift screwdriver. <laughs> yeah, let's do it up here instead. <laughs> I'm like, uh, improvise. So these just pop off pretty easily. So I'll go over here so you guys can see it. Just put it right here, wedge it, and then just push it away like that, and it'll pop off. It's easier to do it down there on the bottom end because you won't have this in the way pulling it out. But this is all we have, so we'll just pull it off from up here. <laughs> Installation of that's pretty easy. You guys will get to see that in a little bit. So now we have all the room to lift this up. We're going to lift it up back here first, like that. And then it depends on whatever side you want to do. So we can do this side first, lift it across like this. And then there's three t T30s on the bottom. So I loosen it all up and I'll leave the uh, bolts inside of there. So when you pull the throttle actuators out, it'll come with it. So, uh, depending on which side you want to go for first, swing it the other way. So this goes up. Now they have room actually. For this. Let's see, you pop off pretty easily. Get those off, swing it aside, grab it, and maneuver it upwards and out. Actually, I gotta take this one off first. Do this connector. Okay, that's off. And then unhook this, like that. Swing it up, over, and then. Lift, push to one side, then grab the throttle actuator. And then pull it up. Will be a very, very tight fit. 
<laughs> then make sure you don't drop the bolts. See? Pull it off with all three bolts in it. So insulation, same thing. Place them on and then pull it out. Same thing. Maneuver it out of the way. Again, make sure you don't drop the screws. So, right here. Cool. Easy. All right, we're done, right? Just put it back together? Done. Fired up, we're gone. <laughs> so once you guys actually get this off, you can actually look at the date. So, first number is the uh, date, of the day, month, and then year. So, 2013. Wow. 2013, originals. All right, so throttle actuator is out. Let me explain to you guys why these fail. So there's two ways of failure. Uh, there are actuators, there are gears inside of there that are made out of plastic. So they do wear down over time because plastic wear. Uh, they do have aftermarket ones that are made out of brass, which is more durable, but it's kind of pointless because there's still a circuit board, right? That circuit board can still wear down. So a lot of people actually get these rebuilt and remanufactured, but I've seen them fail uh, pretty frequently and sometimes when we install them they do fail immediately so I just recommend to just go with new ones in this case we're going with VDO so as you can see down here they look identical there's no difference part numbers exactly the same if you look at them right here and here compare these two OEM VDO identical and the only difference is that it doesn't have a BMW stamp from here to here but it's made by the same company even from factory you can see it stamped right here in VDO Oh yeah. So, VDO is the company that makes it for BMW. BMW relabels it, stamps it their product, and triples the value of the product. VDO, please. <laughs> <laughs> and the rebuilt ones is like, I think it's like four or five hundred dollars. You know, you can get these for like two hundred dollars more. Get these because you don't want it to fail and you have to do the job twice or maybe even three times because I've seen that happen. Um, I know you can order these on FCP Euro, lifetime warranty, buy it once, done. Chances are it's never gonna fail in your ownership because this failed at 34,000 miles, mm -hmm. but 2013, it's a long time, that's eight years. So just get new ones by BDO, uh, more cost effective, and it's the exact same quality and product. So there's no difference whatsoever. See, now he's making me open it, but you know what, I'm gonna do it for you guys. <laughs> Yeah, it's not for me. It's literally all for, all for the. Uh, I'm just gonna open it up. You guys would never have to open this unless you guys want to rebuild it. But I don't recommend rebuilding it. You have the circuit board, which it's a electronic product that is technically a mechanical electronic product, right? So you have a circuit board that's electronic that controls everything that actuates this by connecting to here, these two posts. This is basically just an electronic coil. This board speaks to it and it winds the coil, right? So it moves it like this or retracts it like that. Now, this piece can be replaced. This wears down or this one wears down too, because it is plastic. Oh, wow. See? Yeah. So the All areas right. that's worn is this area, and then somewhat here. And then this as well, you can see this is so, all chewed up. I think I know why. This is daily driving, this is full RPM, there's nothing in between. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you gotta understand, like, you're gonna wear it down based on your driving habit. Like, look at the teeth here versus there. Yeah. So. Look. Wow, that's pretty crazy. So you can change this out and you can change this out, but honestly, what if that fails? Because here's what people don't understand too. The area this sits in is between the motor, right? Up top. You know how much heat is trapped under there? How do you think this holds up against heat? It will wear down. This will short eventually. You can change out all these diodes, resistors, capacitors, and all that, but eventually something else is gonna fail. So just change it. So yeah, I'll spin this and you can see how this works. Yeah. Look, it's stuck. Oh. That's the area. <laughs> see? 
supposed to retract like that, right? Yeah. But once I hit that certain spot. No way. And I go past it and I let go. See? Yeah. Good. And then I get back to here and I let go. That's why it failed. It got stuck in that one position. Hmm. There you go. Interesting. That's so so that matches up to here. And then you look down here, look at all that plastic. Wow, yeah. Plastic shavings, better than metal shavings, right? Yep. So people think that, you know, your driving habit is uh, what's gonna wear down. People, Somebody actually, I think it was in our live feed, right? Yeah, yeah. They said, oh, you just gotta drive hard. Oh, it doesn't fail because you drive hard and you, you beat on the car. It does, because think about it. This is idle, this is wide open throttle. You're wearing it down in two positions. You're holding it here, you're letting off, going, letting off, going, letting off. That's how you're driving. And every time you flip it, right, you're holding it down here, cruising it, and then you downshift, you flip it. Yep. All that load sits on that one area, yeah. and all of a sudden it snaps it, snaps it, snaps it. What do you think is gonna happen? <laughs> Wear down that area. Yep. The wide open throttle going through the canyons. <laughs> Yeah. You're gonna hold it as high as you can all the time, let off, right? Yep. It'll maintain that area wearing it down. Yeah. You're not gr driving and then just slowly opening up your throttle. You're snapping it at one position, just snap it. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I guess if you granny drive this and slowly, slowly modulate your pedal, then yeah, that's sure. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. All right, let's see how bad these ones are. Let's see which one is worse. Huh, like... Oh, yeah. Oh. That one's worse. Yeah, that one's definitely worse. The first one we opened. So, this one's not as bad, but it's definitely there. Look at that. Looks like gum. Yeah. <laughs> wow. All right, time to reinstall these. All right, so since we got them out and gave them some fresh air, you said it's good to put them back in, right? The originals? Yeah, we're gonna put the original ones back in and I'm gonna fly back home, bye. <laughs> Did you drive it? No, this one's fine. Oh, okay. Yeah, he doesn't. I've probably driven him more this year than he has. <laughs> Why? Dude, he's obsessed with planes right now. And they're <laughs> oh. <laughs> so he pulled the engine out and shipped it to Iowa. Damn. And it's taken two months to get it fixed. Uh, okay. And now he's just rebuilding the whole thing because... Is he stroking it? Huh? Is he stroking it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's a fucking option. Bore it out. Yeah. yeah. Installation of this is basically just push it until you clip. Literally just click. You're good. Like that. So here, push this down, get it to here, and... Insulation is the uh, reverse of what we did. We're pretty much done. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much done. Now it's just to uh, re-secure these by uh, not putting them on. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> right. just like that. We're done. Now it's just the uh, platinum go back on and uh, using a horrible flashlight to uh, tighten up <laughs> the screws, but it's pretty much done. Place it on here. Like so. And then it needs to be tilted to get inside of here like that. And before we place it down, we gotta clip on the connector back here that we removed. In a very, very, very tight spot. Just grab it and pull it and get it back in, and you hear it quick. Like that. And then, before you push down the uh, manifold, you have to get this one on. So lift this up, slide it up like this, and then guide it down together like that. Same thing, make sure it clicks. And good. All you gotta do is just push it like that. Easy. Yeah. Now we gotta tighten up the clamps, which you guys won't be able to see. <laughs> I 
I'm gonna use the long one. You know, I have to improvise because I don't have all my tools here. <laughs> I guess this is more realistic for you guys working from home with the minimal tools, right? That is true, that is true. This now slides in like this. And then we wiggle, slide it in, bam, and then we gotta tighten them. Fire this bad boy up. Alright, so since we're here, we're just gonna swap the battery. Might as well. I think this is the. This is the original battery. For yeah, sure. for sure. So I figured it's time to just make the little upgrade. It's a smaller battery, but. Lightweight. Hmm? It's a lightweight battery. Yeah. This is for the uh, exhaust. Now we got that. 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 off and then that comes off so this can come off too make life easier oh damn look at this strong guy feel the weight of this versus dude that. yeah i know you this thought is that was heavy this is probably just <laughs> Insane. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Original battery for sure.
and we're done. Easy enough. So what's the number one thing people forget to do when changing the battery on this car? Coating. Yep. So you have to register the battery for the amperage um, every single time because there is a difference. So you want to make sure you coat it correctly so that the uh, IBS and BTS is able to determine how much voltage it needs to maintain. So just make sure you do that. Done. Cool. Now I just put my trusty wood back. <laughs> Remember, boys and girls, always keep wood on your trunk if you're low enough. That's it? That's it. Just click a couple buttons? Yeah. Bro, people charge like 160 for that <laughs> Yes, no check engine light, baby. Hey, while we're here, can we roll back the odometer? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so today we did the throttle actuators as you guys saw, showed you guys how to do it, what to remove, and then we changed out the battery. Um, and then coated it in as well. I coated it pretty quickly. It's pretty easy to do. Uh, you shouldn't have to pay for it. There's a lot of stuff that you can buy to be able to do it, like Pro Tools able to do it, or a lot of traditional scanners is capable of doing that now as well. Otherwise, just find another shop, install it yourself, and have them code it. They shouldn't charge you any more than like half an hour. It's pretty quick. You guys just saw how fast it was for me to do it. <laughs> so don't overpay. All right, so clearly we are not at the shop at Down in Costa Mesa at Precision, <laughs> so everyone's gonna be wondering, what do you charge for house calls? 10K? Starting? No, 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 no. <laughs> it does not happen, okay? Uh, this is a rare case because I did want to come up here to travel anyways and meet up with uh, Wet M3 over here to kind of enjoy the time because he's been wanting me to come up here. Plus, it's my wife's birthday, so I figured we'll make a trip out of it, and that's why we came up here. Plus, we didn't need a lift. So, <laughs> no, I would not be doing your rod bearings in your garage or on the floor. <laughs> that's impossible, okay? Unfortunately, it's just too much work for me to do that. Plus, I just don't have the time. But I figured I would just enjoy this, you know, small extended vacation, which is just a three-day vacation. But, yeah, that's why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess I'm lucky. I'm the only house call you're going to do, right? Yep. All right, good. <laughs> yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Subscribe. <laughs>